I'm Päivi, an artist from Finland, and this week I'm going to talk about... No, not about oil painting, but about colored pencils. Even if I love painting, I want to show you how you can practice painting with colored pencils, by coloring stroke by stroke and by laying layers, you can practice the skill of painting. And not just practice, you know, art is also relaxing, fun, and I think that colored pencils are so easy, because instead of making the mediums and instead of preparing the studio for all that, I just pick the char and start coloring. In this method, you don't need any photo, you don't need anything. I don't use any reference photos for my paintings, so I also like to color freely. I have divided my colored pencils into two sets. The first set has all the old pencils. Pencils that I bought tens of years ago and some of them are really short and there are watercolor pencils and non-watercolor pencils and uh, they're all mixed up. In this video I don't use any watercolor technique, so I use watercolor pencils but in dry form and most of my pencils are not watercolor pencils. And then I have the second set that is my Prismacolor pencils that I treat much more gently. I really like that soft quality that they have. And that's probably something that you could check if you use your colored pencils, that if they are really hard and it's difficult to get the color out of them, buy uh, new ones that are softer. technique when you layer colors and the colors get mixed you don't actually need this many tones that I have here and if you watch me using colors I don't use uh, so many different tones for one piece. Often when I paint or when I draw I exclude at least one color first because I tend to use every color. I'm a color person. I love colors. That's the easy part for me. When I create, I try to focus on shape and light and what kind of different shapes light generates and not think about colors so much. And for that, I also pick one or two colors that I don't use in the beginning. This time I don't use green. Of course you can get green by coloring a yellow layer and a black layer and when they get mixed it produces beautiful olive green. Or blues and yellows of course. But first I don't use any of my green pencils. And then when I'm near the end, I have this one effect color green that I can use. If you look at my paintings, they often have a set color scheme that is much more narrow than what I use here uh, in this little project. When I paint, uh, I often exclude much more colors and mix most of the colors from pure tubes only. And then when I paint the next layer, I pick a new tube and that way slowly enrich the color scheme, but still keep it quite narrow. So 
that's maybe one thing that you want to experiment after this first little project to exclude more colors and to, to create more monotone paintings that develop your eye for color and that help expressing the impression of light. Many times before I start to paint or start to make these little colorings, I get this feeling that I have to know what I would create before I start. Then every time I have to remind myself that I don't have to know, that I have intuition that has that knowledge, that it comes from my subconscious and that comes by working. I also have a class called Inspirational Drawing where we use this kind of intuitive method but we use black drawing pen first. If you want to practice this more then sign up for the class Inspirational Drawing. There's a lots of coloring and drawing in that. But here I just change the colors frequently and think about painting instead of thinking about drawing. Imagine that you're walking in nature and you explore this area that seems unknown at first but then when you keep exploring you find first tiny little details but you find things that you can start to grow and you can grow the image naturally instead of trying to force it out. When I paint these big paintings, I use quite a lot of this uh, technique called glazing, which means that you lay a thin layer over a big area on the painting so that the previous layers are still visible. And this way you can sort of color light. If you think about yellow light entering the room and coloring everything. You can still see the doors, you can still see furniture, things like that, but there's a tint of yellow that enters um, across the room. And then there can be some areas that are not exposed to that light and those can have a different tint, cooler tint. Uh, for example. So I use a lot of that technique when I paint these so that there's the impression of light, not only the actual objects or shapes that I paint. And that gives them a natural look, like they're a piece of nature. recognize this painting over here, this green one, that I painted in the last video. It's now finished and I really like it. I think that I've succeeded in the natural effect that you can still see that it's hand painted. There's lots of random strokes, but there's also many details that are connected with nature. And there's also this impression of wind and light that I'm always trying to achieve. The problem with colored pencils, at least for me, is often that I'm a bit too heavy handed. So if you start with light strokes and if you have the patience to work gently, not pressing the pen too much, then you are able to build transparent layers more easily, even if you've worked for a while with the same image. Here's the finished piece and I don't show every little detail that I made but I worked for about two and a half hours with it and that's one thing that I think it's connected with intuition that intuition doesn't start immediately that it takes some time 
to get deeper and deeper and that's why I love painting because you can paint layers and you can keep on painting and keep on getting deeper but in colored pencils you can also create layers you can erase something that you have created and this way make tones much paler and get more variety even if you would just use a few colors you can also add more on the top of the erased parts when you layer colored pencils the colors get mixed just like when painting of course the experience is not quite the same because pencils feel different than the paint but when you want to work smaller when you want to work on an art journal or on a bullet journal even this method is just uh, delightful because it's so easy to start and you can also work in many sessions often intuition works best when you also take breaks and let your subconscious uh, process what you've created so far it all doesn't have to be so representational it can there can be a lot of abstract shapes and definitely definitely don't decide to do something particular when you start just keep working and observing what you have created and fall in love with all the little details that appear there accidentally When I colored all the layers here, I thought that somebody who is an expert with colored pencils is probably devastated and horrified because I just keep erasing and keep adding and it's all smudgy and not controlled at all. But that's actually what I think is best in art, that we can let go of control, that we have a second chance, we always have the next possibility and when I paint or when I color I don't want to restrict myself too much I like to use all that energy that I used to put in controlling the big picture I now want to use all that energy for the details and for making sure that the, the colored surfaces don't include uh, tiny little white spots or such that distract and uh, I want to use all that energy for you know getting deeper into my work not trying to step back and control step back and control so I try to put that controlling energy to the last minutes when I 
uh, add little spots to make the composition work. Drawing technical skills often includes drawing a chair or drawing a city scenery or something very concrete. But when we move on to expressing emotion, we are closer to abstract part of art. And of course, these skills for building sceneries, they can be used for abstract part of art too. But um, it's not only that. And I think that's one really important thing that has been in my artist path is to figure out how to connect my emotion, how to enable my inner discussion so that it includes listening, not only talking. And that's been especially difficult for me because I'm a very talkative person. At least when I, when I open the camera and press the record button, I have so much to tell. But I've learned that when I paint, I have to kind of shut down. I have to close the door and then shut down the outer world and then open the inner world and start listening instead of talking. I have a class called Floral Freedom where I explain this more in detail and also more theoretically because there's a theory behind this too and it's not a new one. Vasily Kandinsky and Paul Klee, one of the first people who painted abstract art also wrote theories about it. Vasily Kandinsky talks about uh, releasing the inner voice of the shape and Paul Klee shows practical steps on how to build an abstract piece. And they've written books, but they're quite difficult to understand. In this class, Floral Freedom, I paint floral pieces, but use uh, the theories of Paul Klee and Vasily Kandinsky and show uh, the possibilities of the abstract world. And I think that's uh, the best theory that I have found so far that connect the technical skill with the emotional part and with the more abstract thinking and uh, something that is less about concrete material and more about the spiritual nature of art. For me, in art making, there has been two big words. One is emotion and the other is skill. And then there's this third big word too, which is intuition. And I'd see that intuition is the actual skill. It's not the technical skill, but the actual skill that can connect these two. That I can express emotion so that it comes out naturally, but I can also make it so that it is pleasant to watch and that I can deliver the image. And I think many times when we talk about art, we talk about studies and technical sketches and compositions and uh, principles and all these big th words. And yes, they are really useful, but they are only a part of the overall image, at least for me. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you need more I have a free mini course for the subscribers of my weekly newsletters and that's called Paint the Emotion and that's about painting. It has two versions uh, in one video, acrylics and watercolors and uh, it's, it's a really fun one. And then I also have more classes at www.pianiumparakeet.com. I have drawing classes, then I have this inspirational drawing that I talked about, floral freedom that I talked about, and lots of watercolor painting classes too. Because one part of my artist journey and to learn how to paint with oils has been to learn how to build layers in watercolors. All these techniques 
that we can learn with different media. They all build skills. And then when you find your medium, you realize that everything that you've created has had an effect the final thing probably that's why i use so many glazing layers in my oil paints is because i used to paint a lot in watercolors and little things like that mm -hmm.